Has the human race been cursed by the devil? Humans are carbon-based life forms, and carbon has six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. That's 666. That's the number of the beast. But what does that mean? Are we the beast? Are we the devil? We were made in God's own image, apparently. Is God the devil? Even weirder, if a six-sided shape is a hexagon, have we been hexed? Have we been cursed by the devil? I think most spiritual beliefs agree that humans are distinguished above all other animals by having a spiritual soul, something ethereal that lives on after death. And so if we are bound to ascend once we shake off this carbon-based mortal coil, perhaps the body is nothing more than a cage. As I said, even the way Shakespeare referred to the body as a mortal coil suggests it's a trap. It's a constrictor of sorts that limits our astral abilities by coiling around our spirit. More and more, there's talk about consciousness and how being aware of the world around us and our own existence and place within the world allows us humans to step out of the mundane and become spiritually enlightened. Or free. Even patents from the US government show how altering consciousness can allow a spirit to transcend, to travel in time, to move in space and even walk through solid objects. And I've done a video about that. Link up there. The American government are said to have alien spacecraft that can be controlled using conscious thought or, as Stephen Greer points out, cohesive thought, where a laser is cohesive light and concentrated awareness is cohesive thought. Maybe that's why the internet is trying to divide us all the time, to keep us controlled so that we don't all think in the same way. That's a theory. So is it all about the mind then? I'm not convinced. You see, the brain can only perceive the inputs that it has and can only predict the world within a limited scope of reality. In truth, of course, we can only see 0.03% of all light wavelengths, which is a tiny chunk of the spectrum that we call visible light. That light that we can't see is visible to other animals in the same way as the screams of plants can't be heard by we humans. Ah! Since we can only hear from 20 to 20,000 hertz on average. There is far more out there. So has the devil cursed us hairless apes to a body that cannot hope to ascend to the heavens? It's a compelling question, one that has puzzled philosophers, theologians and thinkers throughout history. The notion of our physical form as a limiting factor in our spiritual journey isn't a recent one. It's a recurrent theme in many belief systems. Yet it's important to consider that our bodies as intricate and complex as they are, may not be the ultimate determinants of our spiritual potential. That's a long, complicated sentence. Let's break it down. While our bodies provide the vessel for our consciousness, they may not define its boundaries. The idea of our corporeal existence is merely a temporary phase in our soul's journey. It's echoed in various religions and spiritual tradition. In Hinduism, for example, the concept of reincarnation, link up here, implies a continuous cycle of rebirths with the ultimate goal of being able to transcend the material world and achieve spiritual enlightenment. Similarly, in Buddhism, the pursuit of nirvana involves transcending the cycle of birth and death. Christianity also touches on this idea, suggesting that our earthly bodies are a temporary dwelling for the soul. The purpose of an afterlife, then, in heaven, implies a separation from our physical form, allowing for more profound spiritual existence. But the limitations of our perception are indeed significant. Our senses provide us with a narrow window into the vast spectrum of reality. The fact that we can only perceive a fraction of the electromagnetic spectrum and hear only a very limited range of frequencies underscores the potential richness of experience that lies beyond our sensory capabilities, beyond our bodies. However, this realisation need not be disheartening to the living. Instead, it can be a source of both wonder and motivation to explore and expand 
our understanding of the universe and even use the multitudinous tools that we've invented to investigate the scientific world. Through scientific inquiry, we have developed instruments and technologies that allow us to extend our perception far beyond our natural capabilities. And although we are human, we can get those abilities from other animals and from the technology that we've invented as a result of studying these things. Telescopes reveal distant galaxies while microscopes unveil entire worlds within a single cell. Furthermore, the exploration of altered states of consciousness, as alluded to before, offers other avenues to expand our understanding of reality. Practices like meditation, psychedelic experiences, and even certain forms of deep contemplation have been reported to lead to profound shifts in consciousness and awareness, opening doors to realms beyond our everyday perception. In a sense, these endeavours can be viewed as attempts to unshackle our own consciousness from the confines of our physical form. These kind of activities enable us to glimpse the boundless potential that lies within and beyond. So, while our bodies may be the vessels that carry us through this earthly existence, they need not be perceived as cages. Instead, they can be seen as the vehicles through which we navigate the intricate tapestry of human experience. The quest for spiritual enlightenment, then, for understanding the nature of our existence, is a journey that transcends the limitations of the physical realm. So keep exploring. For in the pursuit of these profound questions, we uncover the depth and mystery of our own existence. So, until next time, as always. Ooh. Ray 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 Ray